Hey guys, uh, welcome to another revision video on IGCC Biology. Today we're starting on the topic coordination and response. And because it's a fairly large topic, we're going to break it up, up into different parts. So today we're looking at specifically the nervous system. And the syllabus content uh, are as follows. 14.1, nervous control in humans. So if you want to have a quick look at that, and uh, we'll begin the video. So what is exactly this, uh, the nervous system? Well, it's comprised of two main parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Well, the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, but you know, most importantly, the brain. And you've got the peripheral nervous system, which basically are a set of uh, uh, nerves that connect the brain to the rest of the body. So let's just talk about a quick, simple example. You, let's just say you get a paper cut. Um, and you decide you're fed up with this sheet of paper and you scrunch it up and throw it into the bin. Well, in this simple example, you've got obviously the paper cut and you've got some receptor cells in the skin of your fingers that respond to specific stimuli, in this case touch. So your skin acts as a sense organ. So a sense organ is basically a group of receptor cells that respond to specific stimuli. In this case, it's again, as I say, touch, but it can also be things like light, sound, uh, temperature, and chemicals. And you've got uh, some neurons that send the impulses from the sense organ all the way to the brain and therefore we feel pain okay and from the central nervous system there's also a different set of neurons um, that send impulses from the cns basically from the, from the brain this time all the way to what we call an effector and an effector is basically a set of muscles or glands which respond when they receive impulses from motor neurons we'll talk more about that in a second but in this scenario here your brain tells your arms or your finger muscles or whatever to scrunch up the paper and throw it into the bin what's important here again is to note that you've got some neurons that specifically carry impulses from the sense organ all the way to the brain and you've got another set of neurons that uh, deliver or send impulses from the central nervous system the brain all the way to your muscles um, which is just another example of an effector um, and you know these these neurons that connect um, these things together is all part of the peripheral nervous system uh, again which is basically what connects everything to the brain so Let's take a little bit of a more detailed approach to this. Uh, from the sensory uh, sensory organs all the way to the brain, you've got something called sensory neurons, which is delivering that information. So um, as the diagram would suggest, the impulse is traveling from the left side here all the way to the right side in case of a sensory neuron. This is quite important to know the direction of travel of the impulse. And so it starts off from the sensory receptors uh, that gains the impulse and sends it all the way through to what we, um, we, what we call a dendron. Uh, which is basically a little tube and it sends it all the way to the end called dendrites where it uh, relays the information to the brain. Uh, you've got this cell body uh, which is kind of, it's, it's, it's got the nucleus um, of the neuron and uh, the neuron also has the myelin sheath which basically helps to keep the impulses inside the dendron um, and not get lost outside. And how does the sensory neuron compare to the motor neuron? Well, the, the main difference, again, is that in a sensory neuron, the dendrites are at the very end of the transmission. Uh, but for a motor neuron, the dendrites are what picks up the impulse and sends it all the way through to the end where we have the nerve endings. Um, we've also got the tube here where the impulse uh, gets transmitted, but uh, in, a, in a motor neuron, we call it the axon. And in a in sensory neuron, we call it the dendron. It's also got the myelin sheath, so that doesn't change. Uh, but the location of the cell body is, is also different. You've got the cell body, which is sort of uh, midway, or at least not at the ends of the neurons for the sensory neuron. But for a motor neuron, the cell body is always at the at the at the end where the dendrites are. So technically, it's not at the end, actually. It's at the uh, it's at the front part because this is where the impulse starts. Again, as I said, uh, the, the the brain sends the impulses directly to the dendrites here uh, where for, for in case of a motor neuron, it's got the cell body and the line of transmission is going from right to left in this case. So it's got, it goes from left to right here and right to left here.
So it's quite important to understand um, the structure and be familiar with the terms and how to label these diagrams. So in some cases, uh, well, let's talk about this. In the majority of the cases, when, you know, when we feel something, our brain processes the information and then it tells us what to do. For example, in the example of the paper cut, we've got the paper cut, our brain um, processes the information and decides to tell our arms and muscles to scrunch up the paper and throw it into the bin. And majority of life situations are like that. However, there are some situations where we don't want the brain to pro well it's not that we don't want the brain to process it but we can't just we, we can't wait for the brain to process it because that would take too much time. For example, uh, imagine you touch a really really hot pan. Um, if we waited for your brain to process the information by the time it does that and signals our arms to take or, or our fingers to take um, our hands off the pan, uh, we would have been already burnt. Okay, so that's quite ineffective. So in situations like that, we our body is quite smart and uses a simple reflex arc. Okay, so what that does is, in, in this example here, you've got a little pin on the ground and this is your foot and you accidentally step on the pin, for example. So, under normal circumstances, uh, this would get transferred to the brain and the brain would tell your foot to take your uh, foot off the pin basically but because that takes too long uh, what we have here is a, a reflex arc where you've got the sensory neuron taking information from the sensory organ which is the skin of the foot uh, to the spinal cord and instead of that message going to the brain and waiting for the brain to give out an order it gets directly relayed to a motor neuron connected by a relay neuron and therefore the muscles in your toes automatically um, take your foot off the pin okay um, and again the message does get delayed uh, delivered to the brain at some point obviously but the, the action happens even before the brain sends out an order for it to do so for obvious reasons obviously uh, because Again, it saves us time, and um, it's it's just basically you could call it a survival instinct. Okay, so this is what we call a reflex action. So this uh, you you need to be able to draw this simple reflex arc. Um, just understand that there are three components. Obviously, you've got the sensory neurons, um, and the sensory neurons get connected to a relay neuron, which then get connected to a motor neuron, and the, all all this all these connections happen within the uh, spinal cord. Okay, um, so let's just take a quick look at these connection points between the neurons. You see how there's a little gap. Uh, that is represented in such diagrams. Now let's take a deeper look at how neurons connect from uh, one neuron to the other and how the trans uh, transmission of impulses actually happen between these neurons. So what actually happens is that we've got a synapse here. So synapse is basically the connection points between one neuron to, to the other. So this first little structure here, that's the first neuron, and the second structure is the second neuron. Um, and we'll take a look at how an impulse travels from this first neuron to the second neuron and it, you, you can immediately tell that they're not physically connected. So what happens here is that the, as the impulse comes down from the first neuron, you've, it actually triggers these little vesicles to move towards the edge of the neuron and these vesicles contain what we call neurotransmitters. So as they sort of um, connect and fuse with the membrane on the edge, it vomits out basically all these neuro neurotransmitters that were um, were kept inside these vesicles and they get uh, put out into the synaptic cleft which is just basically a fancy word to uh, to describe the gap between the two neurons and so the receptors um, uh, sorry the, the vesicles which contain the neurotransmitters fuse uh, the neurotransmitters get sent out um, and diffuse across to the other neuron where they've got specific receptors that uh, bind to these neurotransmitters and therefore um, it triggers a series of uh, reactions which carry the impulse, um, continue the impulse from the first neuron to the second neuron um, as a result of these uh, interactions. So what's important here is that uh, there, uh, the direction of neuro, the direction of impulses is unidirectional. So 
the impulse can only de only be delivered uh, from the neuron that has these neurotransmitters and only to a neuron that has specific receptors. So in this scenario, you've got the neuron from the top transferring uh, impulses to the bottom. You cannot tra uh, transmit impulses from the bottom neuron to the top neuron because the bottom neuron does not have any neurotransmitter um, transmitter vesicles or the neurotransmitters themselves. So it can only that what this structure allows is that the the impulses can only travel in one direction, and this is specifically useful. in, for example, in reflex arc, where you you don't want um, information traveling, you know, in opposite directions. You want the information only traveling in one direction, and um, these the the how the synapse synapse is laid out allows that to happen. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Um, I'll be making a video on the structure and functions of the eye in the next, so uh, keep on the lookout for that. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.